So uh, you're deep into crypto. I am. I am. So let's talk about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So from my side, recently I haven't been looking at it as much, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm there's nothing to look at right now. No, <laughs> there's at. nothing to but, look at. Yeah, and I'm not like listening to. You know, obviously a lot of people aren't a fan of the prices right now, but I think like uh, the future use of it, it's just a no brainer. I just don't see how um, it can't translate, right? I mean, economies of scale and where we're at with the dollar and inflation rates, like oftentimes we're kind of told that US dollar is what a two to 3% inflation rate, like mm-hmm. people's races are based off that. But um, even dating back to like college, they say like uh, the, Big ba- the Big Mac index, yeah. your test. The Big Mac's inflation's been like, like five percent, if not higher, since the early two thousands. Mm-hmm. Right. And then if you're talking about that as an example, and the whole reason why it's an example is because it a Big Mac consists of pro, uh, items from multiple industries, so okay. you get a good valuation of what the inflation is on those goods. So if the Big Mac's going at a five percent increase, but your idea of like inflation on your dollar is only two to three percent it's obviously not correlating yeah. and then compound that over the last 20 yeah, years yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. you're looking at heavy offset yeah, heavy yeah. offset of it mm. and then obviously like you look at the different valuation the dollar right now i'm pretty sure it's the great british pound is higher there's like it fluctuates but yeah. for me i think crypto bridges the gap with a lot of that and then you know its uses are pretty pretty abundant yeah especially like ethereum right it's gonna be a huge hedge for the u.s dollar oh man especially over time more people are gonna get hip to it and whatnot but also let's add let's ask like what's what affects the u.s dollar it's like well um hypothetically speaking now this is the contra this is the contra to crypto this is like when i talk to my dad about crypto like this is the person i've yeah and and when it's doing well, I talk. I'm like, hey, did you see crypto? And it's <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah. He hasn't heard me talk about crypto for two months. Yeah, he, yeah, it's been. He'll be, like, he'll be like, I'll told, I told you so. The yeah. only uh, heavy argument I see is like, let's say U.S. debt, um, and let's say the U.S. is hedging a lot in hypothetically like Bitcoin or whatever. I don't know what that looks like. Um, let's say Russia knocks on the door, or China, and they say we would like our money that that you owe us. Will they accept crypto? Yeah. Or my guess is they would require something like a gold standard for the debt. Yep. Yeah. You know. So that's where like the question comes in play is like in, in institutionally it's been accepted. Um, now within economies, like will it be? Will it translate? Will it be accepted? You know. Yeah. Right. In in my mind, I think it's going to come down to like long term, whatever is eventually going to stabilize to a somewhat comfortable point as well as offer um like multiple valuable uses you know like yeah. like um things that like can be built off of those like the, those blockchain right. and stuff like that and i actually have an incredibly basic understanding of it i just know that there are certain certain um uh, like cryptos that are better for building certain that are just like essentially just yeah, like yeah. a token but um uh but i think like like things that can have a further use than just representing like a, a value itself like are probably gonna stay ahead oh 100 percent. i mean ethereum for me is like the one that rings the bell all the time like yep. bitcoin obviously is like the gold standard and the big name yeah. in it but ethereum for me has had the most practicality and understanding and like i know close to nothing when it comes to like it's use. I'm not a programmer. I'm not a Delphi pro, a DeFi yeah. uh, based programmer, and I don't understand applications. But I do understand that the workflow in terms of getting an application back to a certain network, uh, you either have a decentralized network or a centralized network. I mean, just in the pros and cons, usually that decentralized network outweighs a lot of that. You have a lot of issues with private data hypothetically speaking if you were to want to youtube okay let's say you want to start posting videos and you want to do it without having yourself canceled yep what's going to cause that what's going to give you the most free reign in my opinion it'd be decentralized, decentralized something that doesn't uh that doesn't tie you and gives you like an ability to have free speech you know and when you get into the details the abilities that something that like i guess to go back an ethereum ether itself 
Ethereum is the network, Ether yep. is the coin, right? And that's like the blockchain that's used to program these applications. So yep. I am just an owner of Ethereum. Now I can stake that and by staking it's allowing another uh, group or entity to use my Ether in the process of creating decentralized applications. Yep. And then it's you return the interest on ex your, ex what you hold already. Exactly. Yep. And it, and then the best part the best part is you're feeding into the success of that system right, because right, right, right. you're now allowing applications mm -hmm. and like processes to be applied with that decentralized token. Yeah. Now on the other side, you could sit there and hold it, and then when it gets to a certain value, which is kind of the strategy I'm taking, it's like then you can kind of stake it, and you never really have to liquidate it. People are actually making like lifestyles based off of income they're making staking it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And. It's not like rocket science, and then on top of that, like if you have, you're now able to back loans, get loans backed by how much you have uh, staked in staked. cryptos, okay. right? Yeah. So people will actually, like banks will, if you show $100,000 in, uh, in Bitcoin, I don't know what the translation is in rate, yep. but they'll give you a certain percentage knowing that you have that- In dollars? In, in collateral, okay. yes. So okay. you can get a loan off of that it's without pulling, yeah. pulling it out. And from my understanding, there's applications now within the Ethereum network that allow you to do this. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's usually like a ratio of like 10% of whatever you have or like some lower percentage. But it's now, from my understanding, there's now applications that are almost letting you to get to like an even higher number yep. where you can back it like one for one, which at that point... What are you? You're eliminating a need for a bank. Yeah, you, know what yeah, I'm you saying? don't need a bank in that case. Dude. It's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah, you're gonna get way higher returns staking crypto right now than what keeping money in, in a, a savings, savings account. account. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, like might have a percent. Yeah, or like, I, don't even know. I mean, yeah. Even, it's yeah. it's like all right, what do you get? One one percent or like a fraction yeah. of a percent? You get a but, fraction of a percent. But like yeah. compound interest, man, and like at the I mean back to the inflation rate it's not it doesn't make it's, sense it doesn't work now as a risk factor it's like okay but like i mean i'm just i'm i don't have children uh yeah. i i but the reason why i'm doing this is for my children yep. in the future if i'm like lucky enough to have them and i know what i'm putting in now i i see where it's uh equity pays off i see where people start finding its use you saw a big wake up this year yeah and i think the problem is there's a lot of whales and the numbers itself, and there's people who monitor this on, on, a, on a daily basis. The big number to look at is number of transactions on the network. Okay. From, the, from when, um, like I guess you can say the pandemic hit, but especially this year, mm -hmm. the number of Ethereum trans transactions on the Ethereum network using Ether has gone up exponentially. Yeah. With the number of, a number that's staying on exchanges is plummeting right because people are actually taking it off of coinbase or your exchanges and they're getting it into wallets yeah and that's showing an intention to hold it that's a long-term yeah, yeah yeah right? that speaks to the long-term use of it right mm -hmm. and then i'm pretty sure this is a pretty special month for uh what is it the d21 like the uh, b21 protocol or the london protocol which causes like they're they're prepping for uh, I may be speaking out of, like out of my breadth of knowledge, but from my understanding, they're setting up a proof of stake model for okay. Ethereum two, yep. mm -hmm. and as of this release of the London Protocol in July, every time you use an Ethereum, it is burned. There, an Ether is it's no burned. longer available. So there's a proof of stake concept yep. where it's not abundantly available. There's a a set limit and yeah. a and a burn rate for those Ethereum, right? Okay. Now, look at the complete opposite end of the spectrum, and no disrespect to anybody who holds uh, Dogecoin, that's like if you were to open up a Dogecoin, yep. right? Uh, you would have a meme, like a yeah. JPEG, yeah. right? Now, to say that JPEG is not worth something, that uh, is kind of crazy too, because you have tokens that are being purchased yep. with Ethereum that hold some value because they're serialized. Well, this is right. a serialized JPEG. Yep. It's just like how much respect do you give that image that of that dog, yeah. right? So I made my own words. I said at a really low price, Doge wouldn't really go up, but it did. Just my principle for holding Ethereum and its utility 
contradicts me owning Doge. You yeah. know, I just for my own like reasons yeah. just uh, don't want to contradict myself for my investing. Principle. It goes but against I, your system. Yeah, yeah and I might be system. wrong. And yeah. all, another factor is the, the I use Coinbase as my exchange. Yep. I don't. I no longer have Robinhood. Yeah. Because of like all I just bullshit, I think yeah. they're shady. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I I don't have availability to buy Dogecoin with my uh, current exchange. Would I? I would throw a hundred dollars, couple hundred bucks yeah. in there, like let it sit. It's good to have it. some right now. Yeah, for well, sure. I, but it is tanking a little bit right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're seeing it come back to life a little bit. Like I mean, like come back to reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but if this does drop, like, you know, deep enough to where like it before all this run up started and whatnot, it'd probably be a good idea for some people to maybe just explore the idea of because you never know. If this, if that shit will kind of make its run again, you know? yeah, right. Which it honestly, I think you know, it mm. probably will. But it's just it. I don't know. It's it's weird. It it pays to kind of be stupid right now. I, I hate to say it. You know, like yeah. you're seeing like you're seeing like AMC does, like yeah. like like randomly hit like waves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Brent, there's still value in movie theaters. You know, like on a fundamental like aspect. You know, but like at the end of the day, like AMC shouldn't be worth. 50 bucks a stock or something like that yeah. at any time yeah, yeah. and like just like yeah really like Doge shouldn't be running the 70 cents right now but it freaking just did it like two months ago yeah um, do, so like do you guys own any other cryptos uh, yeah. or is there any other ones that like like fancy your eye I guess I own some Ethereum just because I, I do believe in it's long term like in it's long term use um, it's just only like a few hundred bucks of it no, nothing crazy um and I own uh, some Cardano actually off of between our conversations and off of your yeah, recommend, yeah. recommendation I got yeah. a decent amount of Cardano actually I want to hear like, you guys talk about Cardano because there's a lot of people are very high on Cardano well I think it's a very ethical like it's a very ethical mission that they're on and, yeah. and it seems like they work off of a uh, uh, not a proof of work model but is it proof of stake or proof of, proof of scale Let's see. I think it's proof of stake as well. Proof of stake, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I I know that the one difference is is they're not a proof of work model. I just can't for the life of me remember the exact. Yeah. It's POS proof of. Yeah. Something. Pro- so. I think it's proof, proof of, of stake. stake. I think so too. And and so. that CEO like a big reason why or the one of the he found, was a previous Ethereum guy. Yes. Right? Yep. And uh, Gerald, I'll, fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the, I've heard people like argue the same reason why people love it, and the, him being as like uh, one of the leaders of it. Yeah. They also don't like it because they think he's just an amazing marketer, right? He's yeah. done an amazing job marketing it, mm-hmm. and they've they've targeted basically the por- portion of the world that every uh, like I guess you could say financial institution in terms of transactions has ignored. Yeah. So they want to hit that like three, I think it's like three billion people that don't even have banks in the yeah. world, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And there are companies now, I believe one of them's like a ticker symbol Humble. Okay. They're trying to do um, almost be the PayPal for that for, for that third world yeah. economy. Oh, for the yeah, economy. and and okay. they're trying and same way Cardano's trying to introduce themselves through the continent of Africa and so yeah. helping like uh, set people up with that because I, I, from my understanding they can't get medical help without like some of these banking institutions and with this in place they would be able to bridge that gap. Yeah. So that's their foot in the door. And obviously, like, uh, there's a couple other factors. They have, like, a council of 10,000 or a 10,000-member board. So for anything to be passed, you have to have a majority of 10,000 people approve yep. it. Where you have, like, Ethereum and these other networks. I don't know Ethereum's. I can't. And yeah. I'm not totally sure what theirs are. But yeah. you have a lot of smaller ownership groups that are deciding how these yeah. coins function. Mm-hmm. Where Cardano, just in that case... One outlines things very well, gives target dates. When they don't have hit target dates, it seems like a very honest and explanatory fashion. And then they've got experience yeah. with the actual crypto industry where at, at its current price, I, I, I don't know what it is right now, but it, it's favoring, like I think they say it could hit like $5 within yep. the next like year or so, year two, $10 like within the next couple years. Yeah. For what it's at now, that's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good return. And then obviously, like, you have the functionality of it, like, mm-hmm. to serve your purpose. You For know? sure. But, yeah, between between Ethereum and Cardano, I thought 
those are pretty good and then there's all all coins based off of ethereum yeah yeah yep. that's the thing that's another reason why ethereum is just you should it's just such a heavily like prospect in this field i feel like just because mm -hmm. there's so many all those altcoins if they ever hit like freaking pay there you know they all run off of like uh what's it the ethereum the blockchain ones, yeah. and whatnot yeah like, yeah so i don't know man i yeah bitcoin's king but like at the end of the day ethereum's gonna have more use in the long run i just feel yeah. like you know bitcoin oh. bitcoin will be the gold because it was the first one but i mean uh ethereum's always i, I think it's just gonna be it will get talked about more because it's going to be used a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. You know? There's a lot more use for it. I mean, you could set up your own bank with Ethereum tokens right now. Yeah. Like, you have an HTML that ties to the blockchain and with the application, and then that loops back to the HTML. So your your connection could be through that blockchain, and then, hypothetically speaking, and they have tutorials where you could do it. You can set this up on the network with a website, and you can have... Um, a promised return, let's say, call it 6%, for people staking with your, um, with with your, your bank. banking institution, yep. Bank of Gerald, yeah. right? And then, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Everyone like start using the, Bank the of Gerald now. The Great National Bank of Gerald, <laughs> yeah. right? And then you're like, all right, like I'll promise you 6%, and then what you do with that Ethereum is you turn it around and then stake it in projects for yep. specific returns. Okay. You know, the same way a bank works with your U.S. dollar. Yeah, that's almost, I mean, that almost even sounds like kind of kind of like uh, like a finance manager taking it and putting it in different, like, in different, like, portfolios. Yeah, like yeah. like having a, a portfolio to with a target of getting a 6% return. Right, so. right. And, you know, I guess my perspective is you shouldn't leave any tone, stone left unturned. Yeah. Yep. You know, I think, like... I, I, I vibe pretty well with you guys because you guys just are, are students of life, right? Yep. You guys are very willing sure. to learn. And, um, you know, there's certain people in conversations are very, like, quickly say I know on subjects, but then there's people who are very willing to listen. I'm just listening, you know? I'm, Same. I'm, I'm Same. just here to listen. I'm here to figure it out. If, if, I, if I eat it on these investments, okay, all I can hang my hat on is like I tried yeah, yeah, and I kept yep. an open mind and I, I don't really regret it at all, you know? Like I, I put in some in Ethereum, I took it out like because I, I wanted to buy some camera gear and it was yep. like I was well above like what I had put it in at. Yep. And I was like, okay. And then it dropped down, I put in some more. So it's just, you know, like a consistent, like... Right. It's a cycle. Yeah, it's like, well, put 50 bucks a month into it, you yeah, know? Like, sure, set it up sure. on auto deposit. Don't, stop looking at the price, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, yeah. it's, what is that, uh, dollar cost averaging? Or yeah, something exactly. Like that. Yeah, dollar just, cost just, averaging. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's a good way to, like... Because if you try to, to catch those waves and everything, you're going to drive yourself fucking nuts, like, trying to yeah. find, like, oh, like, it just dipped a little bit, and then you buy, and then it dips more, and you're like, oh, I missed it. Yeah. You know? And then yeah. it's like... Or it shoots up, you know, like, so it's just like... Yeah, I, I, that's something, uh, what little I do know, at least from an investment standpoint, like, I do know, like, it's more of a, yeah, if you just consistently, like, every month I'm putting 50 bucks in, yeah. it's going to end up, like, kind of equaling out to being probably better than if you tried to guess when it's at its Yeah, low, I mean, so. for the most part, net positive, you could look yeah. at, like, the stock market, like, uh, bull market for quite some time. I mean, yeah. people are wondering when, uh, when it'll taper down, but... It keeps going up and like you have it slowed down and I it kind of looks like it goes opposite of where crypto is sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna hedge each other. I think that's uh, kind of what I think. I mean, I don't know, man. I can see that. That's a good. Yeah. I can, that's I can see reason. when 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 the market's hot, crypto will kind of be kind of <coughs> in the dirt a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, when okay, the market, well, well money's got to be coming from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so like yeah, and once well, yeah, I, I don't know. I just I think you should have your money in both mm. because. Uh, just I, the returns right now though they could be better than crypto honestly just because there's so much speculation behind it. Yeah, well, it's, it's just it's, it's also so very, it's so too, very volatile. It's yeah. so very early. Um, yeah, people are trying to learn this shit and it's just uh, it's tough. I just don't think like people say it's like all right, there's no such thing as like free money, which I 100% agree. Like the money I put into Ethereum and like these other cryptos, like. At the end of the day, I know that there's a cost of like peace of mind. There's a cost of time, and the fact that you can't use that money right now. Yep. So it's like anything. It's like uh, like anything, man. It's like kind of like you put in work. You know that 
at the end of the day, it's not really the end result. Cool, like I got a nice number in my check, but it's the fact that I took the time to be like process driven enough to yeah, like, invest yeah, to in take myself. the risk yeah. and to learn yeah. it and whatnot. Because a lot of people won't take the risk and yeah. there's this the shoulda coulda woulda shit, you know. And, yeah, and like at the end of the day, man, um, just like you said, the, uh, you wouldn't regret if you know if if it bites you at some point, but you gotta like, dude. I don't know, we hear about these people who made investments at, at certain ages and whatnot, and uh, they turned out to be very well. And whatnot. Yeah, you, yeah. you gotta like, you gotta take the step and whatnot, and at least put a little into something, you know. Absolutely. Spread it out. I don't know, you know, do something like that. Some people have been doing it the wrong way, right? So it's like, all right, like I think this week it's gonna blow up. They take their savings out, put it in. They got a house payment they gotta make or car yeah. payment. You shouldn't be doing that's that. That's the equivalent of gambling. You know? Yeah, it is. It's, it's gambling. gambling. So they want to see it hit. So they're going to stock market out. gambling. Yeah. That's, that's, that's swing trading and yeah. gambling. Yeah, but then, dude, also, it's like people will put it in and they don't, they don't have it in savings. Like, general rule of thumb, from my understanding, they say you should have three to six months expenses in your savings account. Yep. That's what's sitting there. Now, that's like even kind of... I guess you can say, like on the on the lower scale, some people say even six to nine. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, uh, if you think about what that does for your peace of mind, you're yeah. just a much chiller person. Mm-hmm. You're for not sure. stressed for about. Sure. It's like, hey, listen, I I need this job, but I don't need it that much. I yeah. don't need to step past my principles. Yeah. Or like, you know, like you know, some people have to do different things to make money, and for sure, you don't want to get to that point, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like. Put yourself in a bad life position just because yeah. you, yeah, you like want to keep your keep paying for your fucking Ford Bronco. Right, right. Yeah. But we we got to practice. It's called selling shit. your soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. It's called selling your soul, dude. It happens, right? It happens all the time. <laughs> well, pre- we pre- preface this. I'm assuming like with this is not investment advice for anybody that's listening. Right, right. Yeah, this yeah, is no. for entertainment. Yes, <laughs> and and uh, suggestion to just. Look into it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take it from us. Some of the things mm-hmm. like Google, like uh, what are the uses of Ethereum? What are the uses of Bitcoin? What are the uses of Doge? Like uh, look at news articles. Who's investing in it? Who's not? There's a lot of transparency yeah. within the network itself. I follow guys that are specifically, um, they create applications on the blockchain. Yep. I want to know what their perspective is because they have a stake on their day-to-day jobs. Yeah, because that's, that's what they're doing. They've yeah, chose that, that as yeah, their yeah, sword. Yeah. You know what yep. I'm saying? Yeah. So you go from a regular application creator, and you're like, I'm going DeFi because I feel that long-term, one, knowing that knowledge benefits me financially, but two, I believe it's the future of yep. um, private data, how people function. I mean, yeah. like I have family in, in Europe. We send money through Western Union normally. Yep. You don't need a Western Union if they have a wallet now. Right, they have right, a crypto right. wallet. What's up, Aunt? Like, let me yeah. send you some ether. Yeah. You know, like. One thing I want to say is cool, just for anyone who is not in the crypto yet, but you know they're they're on they're on the fringe or they're just completely against it or anything like that. I think a big sign that we see on crypto right now is if I don't know if you watched the past. Uh, this last week's UFC with uh, you know McGregor and Poirier and whatnot, crypto.com. but Crypto.com is crypto.com. now into the game. You know, yeah. so it's well, like, dude, and this is what about cool. the fucking UFC? Like, not ever like getting like sponsors or not yeah. having fighters have sponsors, and then they just slap a fucking crypto. Crypto. Yeah, crypto.com right <laughs> I there. saw that and I was like, it yeah, almost looked like, out of place. You know, it, yeah, like, it, it, cool. it does look weird. It, it does look weird, weird but yeah. like. For for me, for someone who like who who has interest in crypto and whatnot, like I see it as a really positive sign. It is. I think positive. it's really cool. Like I mean, like I agree. With I, you. I don't know. Like you want to throw that on on like a major organization's uh, like branding. And they whatnot. must be sold on it being yeah, crypto. Uh, crypt- there's gonna be yeah. there's some future mm-hmm. in crypto. That's just all I want to say. So like that that to me was just such a cool sign. I'm like they're they're basically on the hottest sport right now. You know. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. There's something there, you know? Well, and what I want to say, too, is, um, you know, opening up an account on Robinhood or uh, Coinbase and stuff like that is easy. Yeah. Just clicking the buttons on your screen to purchase Ethereum and Bitcoin or Dogecoin is easy. Anything that's really worth doing and that's going to actually be a worthwhile investment for you is not going to be easy. It's For going sure. to be difficult. It's like life. Nothing that's really, really, really worth it is free or is For easy. Sure. Mm-hmm. 
The, and you ain't gonna get rich overnight. Well, you're not gonna get. There's no way to get rich. unless if Doug does that again, well, or outside of the lottery, <laughs> which is the lottery. Yeah, basically. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, so that is, that's the, the point I'm making is is what's hard is taking the steps to understand which projects Ethereum is being utilized on, where like where it's heading, where the, doing the digging, doing the due diligence, understanding what you're doing with your money. So it's like if you truly want to like want to have to make sure that your dollars are being put in a good spot like you gotta fucking do what's hard and do your research and sure. look shit up and that that's why i'm almost like i'm not huge into this stuff because i haven't taken the time to like i said i have a very basic knowledge of most of these things and i go off of like recommendations more people close to me that i really trust because like i haven't like if i see something that looks good like I'm not gonna throw money at it unless I understand what's going on with it. Because if I just throw money at it, like a few weeks later, it could be in the shitter. Because I didn't, right. I didn't read into the fact that they, like, were heading in a certain direction. You yeah, know? So, yeah. Like, and maybe it was just you a few news articles, first. you know. Like, but yeah. that, that's the next hard thing too. Is like, hey, that did dip and whatnot. Like, you invested because you thought it's something of value down the road, you know. So like, yeah. it's, <coughs> the next step is being yeah. patient, not pulling your shit because like. I lost half of it, so I might as well save the other half before that goes away. It's like, you put your money in there, like, you should be ready to have it stay there for a second, yeah. you know? And that's the next hard part. That highlights, like, unemotionally. That's the, yeah, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. un that you're taking the emotion out of it, dude. It, yeah. It's, I like one, so, one show I love, but I don't watch often, and recently on a trip I was watching it, Shark Tank, man. And you yeah. just see, like, you see the mentality. It's like, you got to give yourself permission to like kind of break that generational like ceiling that you might be carrying for your wealth, right? Yep. At the end of the day, like like um, my family came in here as immigrants and like one thing I quickly realized is like, you know, the differences between rich families, middle class families and like seeing that within like uh, something like a high school or a school and seeing how like certain people act as they grow up around money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you could either have a really big chip on your shoulder that helps you kind of break that gap but also it's like that that like belief in abundance right and i know it's like it's one thing to believe it's going to happen but it's one th it's another thing to like practice it with that belief yep and i think by looking into these things unemotionally looking at unemotionally looking at um sorry guys unemotionally looking at your investments you can now take a step back and listen to people who have like uh, opposite opinions. Like for yeah, me, it's yeah, like, yeah. let me hear why you don't feel that Ethereum is like, has its utility and has its purpose. I, I welcome the conversation. Oftentimes when people don't want to talk about it, it's because they haven't took time to research it. They do not have any money in it and they feel FOMO. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, let's just be honest. It's like, all right, like, I'm willing to share with you. I'm not an expert. I'll just share where I got the sources. Yeah. Go to the sources yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. And it's a pro process-driven approach. Plus, like, I'll be damned if I'm going to be in this, like, this group at this age and then be the person who's got, like, a, a baby boomer mentality with what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Things change. Patterns come up very often yeah, with, yeah, the, yeah. It, it, with the economy. Is I mm -hmm. think you could find some answers within all of that right there's some common principles you're going to constantly see sure. when it comes to financial investing for sure you know? for sure regardless let me um vibrate there there we go Talk let about. me ask you real quick um so like for all those who are interested in the like uh, almost like the meme stuff a little bit you know mm -hmm. so, like touch on doge have you looked into like shiba <laughs> have you looked into like uh safe moon like yeah, what's, what's yeah. your opinion on all that stuff What's so funny is like my girlfriend sent me Safe Moon like okay. oh like a while back yeah. man yeah and yeah. Uh, like I saw it I'm like wow this is awesome you get kind of penalized for for pulling your, for money. Pulling your money yeah and like it, it forces that kind of like that camaraderie or that community of like keeping yeah. it in there yeah yeah and then you have Barstool Sports accepting it as its number yeah. one like uh, like hey this is I the way we're at it I think Safe Moon of all three of them has kind of like potential the in most a weird way in a probably. weird way I, would, I mean I would still put Doge up there because everyone knows Doge but yeah. like I just I, I I have a weird speculation about fucking Dude, yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. I, TikTok was like so it started with TikTok people posting it. My girlfriend shows it to me. I'm like, 
maybe. And I'm like, I like I have to set up this new account. I was like lazy. I'm like, I'll look into it again. And then fast forward two months, three months pass, and that number was way less than it got up to. Yeah, I know yeah. for a fact I could have made some good money on it. Yeah. Uh, this beautiful announcer, Barstool Sports, lays out a green Did screen it. behind <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. poor Noy, and he's like. Mixing up hats. What is like, it? Put his 40, he, what is it? Forty k. He's like, you want to put his forty k into something? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's he what it was. And he, goes, <laughs> he, he puts the damn hat on, and I'm just kicking myself. Then you have the social aspect right yeah, there. Yeah, it's like you yeah. look at AMC, uh, yeah. GME. Those like. So I'm telling you, it pays to be stupid a little bit yeah. right now. And, and just like, like, unemotionally be like, I believe in human reaction. Yeah. Like, yep. Dude, I have the funniest story ever when it comes to this. Like. We, Texas had this giant blackout period this yep. winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it hit that the entire uh, utility network, power shut down everywhere, water, like mains freezing over. They weren't ready for that level of cold. Right. And then there's an article that comes up, and it's Tesla invests or Tesla-owned company uh, puts new battery on Texas network. Okay. And I'm like, what's this company? Yeah. And it's and I look it up, and it's like they in the article it says like Gambit Energy, or Gambit or something along those lines. So, the ticker for this it's owned by by Tesla, so it technically falls under their ownership umbrella. So they don't have a ticker, like the ticker is Tesla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was like, maybe there's something similar, and like, and I realized after looking, there's a Gambit Energy Services LLC in Texas. And it's not the same thing Tesla owns, <clears throat> but I, it was set at like, geez, what was the price? I think the price was like point zero zero like eight or like eight cents or something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in my head, I'm thinking people are gonna buy this thinking it's thinking Tesla's it's, company. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. are gonna buy it. And I have uh, I have Fidelity. And it's a specific, it's a it's like a pink sheet, it's like a penny stock, so you have to call it in. Yeah. And being lazy, I'm like, I'll oh, call it in tomorrow or something like that. Yeah. It goes from like that eight cents and like uh, I was gonna put in like, jeez man, it was like a hundred bucks or something. <laughs> yeah. And it popped up to ten dollars. Oh boy. Ten dollars and and it, it's I think I want to say it's like. It dropped down to five, stayed at five for a long time, yeah. and then maybe like a dollar. And you saw the spike basically from that yeah. news article. Yeah, 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 and yeah. that was, a, I knew I would have invest. I wanted to invest in it. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. The easy. Because yeah, I knew human behavior where yeah. people would think oh, the yeah, same yeah, as me yeah. And, yeah. and do it. Sell the rip. And I didn't Bye. do it. And I'm sitting here. <laughs> yeah. I think I calculated it was like, I would have gone up like $64,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, it hurts. Wow, it hurts. Yeah, but for that same reason, I'm like, oh, if I caught this next time, yeah. I know to do it. So. Right. Well, it's funny. So I, uh, I view you as a very, like, process and like, I was telling Drew about this before the show. A very process driven individual. Like, Absolutely. I feel like you have a workflow for like everything. I tried to. Yeah, yeah. Was that is that naturally how you are, or did you just find that? that doing that really just helps you get the most out of yourself? Kind of how did, or did, when did you notice you even, yeah, like, I, I, love, I love this question because this has been, like, I, this has been a running thing in my head the last, like, like, I'm on a great, I call, like, wave, like, yeah. where of motivation with this. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've kind of summed it up. It's, like, piece by process, right? Like, yeah. when, like, I'll just use an example. Your job's stressing you out. You got a lot of workload. All right, you can sit there and complain about the fact that this, Work's not done, and then you want to get to a point where it, it is done. And your peace of mind lies in this end and beginning, right? Yeah. And in between, we often, like, skip over that. But, like, just working, like, I've noticed is, like, almost like a meditative thing. No matter what you do. Obviously, if it's a remedial task, when you step off, like, you get really pissed. But I notice when I'm doing things specifically and I have a process for it, there's no guesswork, a.k.a. no no decision making left other than do the damn thing i find a lot of tranquility in that right and like growing up i've always like been detail oriented and i love being creative and i noticed like I, I drew when i was young like when i was young and i don't think this is anything i have that other people don't i think everybody has a natural ability to understand this it's just that we're not taught to uh conceptualize learning right and 
what was it like I want to say like five four or five years ago like uh, it might have even been before that like I came across like uh, a group of people that like are really memory based like learning based uh, like savants they're just like top of their field yeah, but right. uh, it was suggested this course called uh, learning how to learn on Coursera eh. free course right and it explains techniques for learning, memorization, like uh, com compartmentalizing memory, understanding memory, how it works in your brain. Was I it with an older dude and a lady? Yes. I took the same I course over that. quarantine. I remember you telling over me Over quarantine, yeah. we were talking about just learning how to learn, yeah. and I looked it up and I took it. Awesome course. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. Continue, continue. That same concept. Yeah. So like, I, I'm like, all right, there's literally technique for everything you do. The things I gravitate, the things I love most in life are things that have that tied to it but you can find that in almost every little like thing you do cooking like it could be uh recently i just I, like i started golfing a lot yep. but i noticed that it has the same things i see in jujitsu the same things i see in like everything it's like technique driven find a niche find one little thing focus on that develop that lose yourself in that and then progress through it. Lose yourself in the process. Results are a joke, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they they only exist in two states, and that's past and future. They yeah. never exist in the present. Yeah. They do, but the experience, like, yeah. Yeah, the experience, yeah. like for example, I'll just compare it to fighting, right? Yeah. You just want to fight. That experience, if you did not train for that damn fight, right. that experience of winning will feel... Um, it's a different feeling than when you put the work in because yep. if, if you got it on accident, you f you f that experience is different than winning with putting blood, sweat, and tears in preparation, right? Yeah. right? And then even your peace of mind, whatever, like a win or a loss, the fact that you are a single human being who did that, you versus you, for weeks, going in, preparing, then you get to this moment you deliver in your process, right? And you that result is an experience of this process, right? It's just yep. a checkpoint. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is right, not right or wrong, but it, it is what it is, and then I yep. make adjustments to do it better. Mm -hmm. right. And when you accept that it's endless, just like, it's endless till you die. We're all gonna come to that point, but it's like putting everything in a process like for me, it just gives me so much peace of mind. Yeah. I, you bring a problem yeah, to me, yeah. and it's like, it's not if that problem solved, it's how I solve it, right? right? If someone's annoying you, right? Okay, you can have a conversation and like have a really open dialogue. That's a very good way of solving that problem. Yeah. Then there's the other side. You kick their ass, get rid of them. Like to, you, there's a million things that you can do the wrong way that solve that problem, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not fulfilling, right? Yeah. Right. So for me, it's like, I, I, I'm sorry to get passionate about this, but no, that yeah. is an echoing concept in everything you do. Right. And when like, when you feel it, you feel it yeah. and you want to share it, right? Like yeah. if I could, if I could be like 12 years old again and somebody share that with me, yeah. I, I don't know if you listen at that age. I think you really have to experience like yeah. a lot of it's, like ups and downs. To yeah, get to yeah. It. yeah. You yeah. haven't experienced enough yet at 12. <laughs> but yeah, man. And then another, like another source that's amazing for this was, uh, the art of learning a book. It's by, mm -hmm. uh, um, last name Wat Watskin. Uh, I believe David Watskin, he's like, his, his entire life is like amazing if you look at it. So they made a movie on this guy when he was like, he was a 12 year old uh, chess savant, chess, yeah. right? Like uh, they, the movie's called Chasing Bobby Fisher. And his entire, from like 12 to 18, he's immersed in the chess world, one of the best chess players, and it burnt him out, right? Yep. Goes from chess and then starts doing i believe like tai chi push hands yeah mm -hmm. the guy ends up training tai chi push hands for three four years people have been training it their whole life in taiwan goes to taiwan like facing they're like changing up the times that he's about yeah, to they're like fucking with them they're fucking yeah. with them they're like he they see him eating they're calling him to the mat like yeah. all kinds of stuff they're like terrible right yeah everything against them wins the world championships in their home country against one of their like men People, right yeah. everybody was against them takes that all right i'm done with tai chi push hands goes into uh jujitsu jiu finds yeah. marcelo garcia starts training under marcelo garcia uh one of the one of the best pound for pound jujitsu practitioners to ever ever live 
goes under his tutelage, goes through, becomes a world champion in jujitsu. Now I believe he's like foil surfing, right? Yeah. And like his his and that book specifically talks about how he finds niches and specific things to be uh, world class at. Because mm-hmm. it's one thing to be, it's very hard to be world, uh, world class at every aspect yep. of a specific yeah, yeah, genre yeah. or like practice. Uh, but it's it's easier to, not easier, but it's success rates higher if you could find a, a niche, a specific technique yeah. you could beat everybody out at mm-hmm. and then have that winning edge where you are now on a playing field with that 1%, right? right, yeah. right. And that concept is like, Hey, I just want to give myself a shot, right? Yeah. And yeah. doing there's the right way and wrong way. There's a lot of people who work very hard who get nowhere because they don't want to take the time to understand that like it's not just about slamming your head against the wall. It's about taking a step back and understanding there's a door to your left. Right, 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 you know? right. So there's a smarter, not harder aspect oh yeah. in certain yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, and dude peace through process man when you're grinding and you find something you love you lose yourself in it and like nobody can take that from you that's a very like nice place to be and people want to be around those attitudes yeah they do do. not not a lot to complain when you have a process to kind of focus back yeah 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 if you're the right person too you'll take a right you'll you'll take a lot from being around that in someone else as well oh 100 percent yep um birds of a feather right they fly together yeah yeah 100 percent. i mean i love that subject man i've been like yeah the last week i've been just like thinking about it a lot and i was like talking about like golf like golf's like one of those things it's a perfect example of it it's like you have a hundred years of technique the only thing that's changed is the technology yeah it's like so who am i to sit here and act like i'm smarter than anybody else i'm just gonna go to everybody who's done it the best find the best literature find the specifics and find the one thing that that makes a big difference like i just i found out grip grip's a big deal you know yeah. mm-hmm. and i realized that when i went and played with a dude who's like literally head and shoulders better than me and i sat there like a student ego aside and listen and he's like your entire grip's trash. Like you're like the, he he gives me this number eight. It was, I think it's eight or four. I believe it's only four people in the entire PGA Tour of 180. I think that are on it. Uh, professionals fighting for like these are big checks, twelve yeah, million man. dollar checks. Right. Only four of them have a split hand grip. Yeah. So in my head, decision making on my process. All right, my process is training this split hand grip. What is my likelihood of success? Okay, so four of um hundreds yeah Yeah. it's like i think it's 2.2 percent i did the math that you can that's that you're one of those guys not that you can get there yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so what's the what's the rationality it's like well it greatly affects your because golf's a game of like not not missing basically yeah same with jujitsu you're looking for openings on their mistakes yeah you know what i'm saying it's a chess match exactly so it's like all right so if i want to minimize my misses all right, my understanding is the best and most successful in the sport, the best who ever lived, have either a intertwined or an overlapping grip because you want your hands working together through that motion. So having that in mind, I started golf three months ago. I'm like, I am not going to sit here. I've, I've done jiu-jitsu enough and been around people who are world-class work ethic mm-hmm. to sit here and go to the range and hit balls hoping that a nice straight ball is the only thing I'm going to remember. Yeah. Yeah. I want to minimize my misses. So that's a perfect example. My grip, focus on the grip, tie it to the swing, and let the rest of it not worry about it. I don't care where that ball is going. I want to make sure, well, I do. I want to make sure it's straight, and I want to make sure that my body is working a fluid motion efficiently. You know, yeah. And there's a bunch of information out there for you to back those decisions now anybody who's been doing it since they're a kid this is where it bothers me it's like you've been doing it since you're 12 years old but and and you go and pay that money to go out there but you're not willing to take the time to kind of learn it a little more right yeah and i understand your release might be a little different thing but for me it's like if you're going to do it do it the right way Mm -hmm. and having a process for whatever it is you're doing really makes your success rate go through the roof with it for sure right, right, right. or it lets you enjoy your process a little more because obviously you're getting better you're seeing some kind of progression right right know? right yep i mean your guys' fighting process like do you feel like that's echoed in other aspects of your lives Absolutely. for sure yeah. for sure dude mm-hmm. it's like it's it's like it's a hard task to sign yourself up for you know oh, man. so like uh 
Yeah, I think it definitely does, like, it definitely does translate over into other hard things, you know, mm -hmm. or, or new skills or something like that, you know, because um, cause in a way, if you tell yourself, I'm doing one of the harder things already, and I'm practicing for one of the harder things, like, I can pick up some of the other things. Absolutely. So I think, it, 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 in a way, I, think, I guess maybe, I don't know, the more things you do pick up and whatnot, I mean, it, it does translate, it does translate. Yeah. It's like cross training. If we're like looking at fighting as a whole, and you cross train different things, you know, I was just talking to him. Like uh, I had a buddy who I went and saw today um, to uh, to get a shirt to, but uh, he he rock climb. He like rock climbs a lot, yeah, yeah. you know. And I did that for the first time, and it, like it like and I'm like, dude, that cross training for the grip would be like phenomenal, you know. Like I, it would be great to add something like that into like the the swimming and the biking like. Uh, Repertoire, you yeah, know yeah, saying? absolutely. So it's just and that that's like I love that you found the grip and how it translates to the rest yeah, of yeah. Like I'm like, dude, I'm like, damn, I'm like in fight camp right now, two weeks out. Like I can't be going to fry my grip out with rock climbing at this moment. But however, could be something good to training wise to, yeah. to pick uh, up, uh, you know, down the yeah. road a little bit, you know. So yeah. it's but, like mentally, that's a tough thing to do, right? I mean. So. Even if you have lines on you, I have not rock climbed before. I've only yeah. seen like rock climbing and free solos. Dude, it was like, hard. <laughs> yeah. like it I'm, was it was kind of hard. I mean, um, I'm definitely strong upper body and whatnot. Yeah, and I yeah. definitely use it a little too much, you know. But like, uh, they had like different color rocks. You know what I'm saying? And they're like the the, uh, um, I guess the level of like uh, toughness to them. Okay. You know, like it it goes up. You know, so I, like I was able to get to like the middle rock, which is, like the like the blue one where I could not like. Really, where I couldn't really do. I couldn't really do that path. Like, were you were you hanging at any point? That's where. Oh like, yeah, some of them. Like there was like a. I think he said it was like a forty-five wall or something like that. Oh, like right, that was right. kind of cool. And then you just. Yeah, that's where it freaking. You can spider man. man. You yeah. can sit yeah. up and you just hop off. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know shit about rock climbing. I'm just saying, <laughs> I yeah. did some stuff today and it was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, like, I mean, uh, well, it's like Free Solo, that movie, a lot of people have been a big fan of. That guy climbed one of the most ridiculous like rock surfaces on the planet right. and like you got to peer in this to this guy's process man yeah. and like he one thing that i could not get out of my head is like how much of it was himself like just doing the bit and how much it affected his relationships right like yeah. these people look at it as you're my die and he's so locked in on his technique that that's not a thought. He just he's he's like he eliminates that thought As by trusting his process of training for it. Right. This guy scales it a million times with the ropes. He knows every crevice, every inch. Knows exactly what to grab, and it's like that's to the nth degree. Yeah, you know what right, I'm saying. Right, right. So it's like the the difference, and you know you could tie this to mental health. It's like just get lost in one thing. Just have yeah. just just. Quit dipping your feet in. Just dive yeah. in. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like let it em embody everything you do. I need to go back to that myself, dude. That was. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't hate the interrupt. No, no, you're interrupt. like it, but, it's. I I say it to myself yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like there's a lot of things we just. We get us. older. We get pulled in so many different directions. And, mm -hmm. You know, and, and well, dude, and that's like I, I like for me like this is an example. This is something like it's been a part of that bunch of things that yeah, I like yeah, I dip yeah. in for a little bit and then I dip yeah, in dip something out, I dip yeah. out right, and I'm right. like like for me I'm like I want to make this what we're doing literally right, right here like yeah. one of the like I'm doing we, this. we need to have like, like three things that we're yeah, like, like like way steep in yeah because exactly. this is this That's is only ever going to be up. like successful and really help a ton of people if I'm doing this yeah, like yeah, like yeah. for if it's like if I'm not like eh, a little bit and then come back and then a little bit you know yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but same thing like uh, because like I have fighting it's like one of the things like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I've been like searching for like what else can I like thing, dive in what thing with like, it yeah, what so, complements it mm -hmm. what I mean, can be I, done at any time like I've yeah. locked off a spreadsheet like seven pa seven columns and I did hour by hour because I was like dude, there was a point like within the last year with the pandemic and everything I just felt like I was running so thin man like yeah. with so much stuff and I was like, where's my time going? And what happened to like these things I would just, I would just lose myself in. And I found out that like I had, I was wasting so much time like with activities, like the amount of, I had like, like 16 hours of my week wasted, just wasted, wow. like looking at it. Yeah. And it wasn't until like I put it there and then I like, 
I think about like, all right, like what are what are my daily processes that like I don't have that are like good because it's like you could have a process, but it could be very fragile. Yeah. Like, right. But how do you make it anti-fragile where like if you're not at this place at this time, you could still do that thing. Yeah. You know, and that takes a lot of prep work. But damn, it's a good feeling when you yep. like, all right, this is my morning routine. Doesn't matter where I am on the planet. Like I feel juiced, I feel ready. This is yep. how I built it out. I need just cold water, um, time ten minutes quiet, and like one page on a notebook paper, right? Yep. And boom. Now that's not mine, like, but generally I could probably like sum mine down to that. Yep. And I still feel more prepared than just rolling out of the bed, jumping on my computer for work or whatever it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And part of it's like. I want to say this because I think we have to give ourselves permission to be like absolute monsters in all of our crafts because yeah. we live in a world where like we're so afraid of intimidating people who don't try yes. and trying is like not cool. It's like, it's like look no, at him yeah, trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, look at him trying hard. something serious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like they're starting a podcast. It's like, yeah. fuck you. Yeah, they are. And they're I'm, grinding. Yeah. That's like, I'm glad that you bring this one up, dude. This is such a, it's like a, this is an epidemic right now, dude. It's crazy. And it just, the aspiration just gets beaten out of people, yeah, man. It yeah. just gets fucking beaten out of people. And once it's beaten out of them, like, who it was beaten out by, they just continue to live their life. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like, well, Dude, it like, sucks, it too. Sucks, because, like, it sucks. There's a lot of cool stuff. Like, there's a lot of cool things that can be created by people that aren't just because they think that they think that the world's just like, what are you doing? When it's, yeah. like, just maybe one person. Like, it might just be one person maybe in their circle. Person, you know? It might like, be their circle, but like or their family. Or even if that you know, is so. the case, like you still gotta put middle fingers in the air. Yeah. yeah. At some point, and you gotta yeah. fucking yell. Exactly. You gotta go. You exactly. gotta go. Yeah. And yeah. like yeah. I look at it this way, and when it does work out, you're like the train has resistance, you know. Yeah. But eventually, when it starts moving, like it's either like get the fuck in. Or get the fuck out the way. Yeah. Like that's it. It's that like, momentum. And like, but you're gonna before you get to that moment though. Like, there's gonna be a lot of backlash, dude. There's gonna be a lot of backlash. There's gonna be a lot of weird feelings <coughs> and whatnot, weird vibes and whatnot. But like, if you stay diligent, and you stay on that path. Like, people are going to have to break at some point yep. because you have not broken. Yeah, and you shouldn't yeah. apologize for. You your shouldn't story. apologize you're unless doing if you're your best, you know? right, right, dude. That's, that's something you want to do. Yeah, it's like you, you really want to do. If you're yeah, if you're living like a degenerate and something like that, and I, I, it's it's different story. Like if you're a threat to other people's lives and shit, and you're yeah, you're hurting Obviously, people. Yeah. That's a different story. Yeah. But like if you're if you're doing something and you are trying something and you're working towards something that you want, you feel is valuable and whatnot, and it might be a little bit off the realm of like reality for other people you know like you got it you can't like you can't fade to like yeah you can't let the aspiration get beaten out of you right you know? yep. like think think about a night out how people like like 100 percent. let's say you have a like whoever might have like a business idea or like you want to do something creative it's yeah. friday night your phone's ringing they want you to go out you got a niche to do something yeah yep. and then that's that moment that's the devil's in the details this is like this is literally like I don't want to put it in like not in a religious way. Devil's on your right side, angels on the left, or right. vice versa, whatever it might be. And you have a choice. And yeah. do you feed your soul? Is the question. Yeah. Like, because at the end of the day, like let's say you don't, you step off. Enough days like that, you'll remember back, and you'll have to look in the mirror and say you didn't love yourself enough to feed yeah. feed that animal mm -hmm. that's there. You know what I'm saying? And you're just doing it because you want to make people feel comfortable. Cause your yeah. friend, when he's out, is drinking and has to think about you working, man. Yeah. Well, guess what? He might drop that. He might put it down, and he might join you, man. Yeah. Like, yeah that yeah, might yeah. be a, it, it's benevolence in action. And honestly, you need people in the world like that are that in their communities and that people who are similar can latch on and give themselves additional permission to do that and those that aren't down like let them face out they'll find yeah. their crowds man yeah, bars yeah. are still full fridays yeah, 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 yeah. you can find a friend in there man yeah, but yeah, like for sure, for you sure. know i'd rather find mine on the mat places like this yep, and absolutely. having these types of conversations you know absolutely amen dude. 
Shouldn't be a timid soul. Bottom yeah. line with yeah. it. Quantity. Or, or quality. Quality. Yeah. quality. You guys got me jacked, bro. I Let's go. Like, this, is, this is the one that we're going to wait for. That's the one that we're going to wait for. That's the one that we're going That was a good one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like, the reason why I, I feel this, like, I try and feel this every day, and, like, I, I love this definition, uh, like, of genius. Like, the ability to renew the same emotion for something every single day. Right. Yeah. So somebody who's a math genius, they were able to love math enough every day yeah. to become amazing at math. Yeah, they they yeah. did it. Yeah, they loved it. The days they hated yeah. it too. Yeah, the days and they hated it, they still loved it. Right. You know? And then it's, it's. I mean, we we know with the training. Yeah, you know? Like there there days like I'm like together. fuck, I don't want to do this. Yeah, yeah. And then but here's the thing though. When I leave the gym that night, I'm like I'm glad you know I'm glad I, I did full. it. Even though yeah, I'm like even though full. like I didn't want to. Now I'm really glad that I did. Yeah, I feel yeah. Full, so. and you did the work with yeah. cryptos, man. One day it's like they'll look at and be like, "What a genius! Put that yeah, money yeah, in yeah. there." It's like, it's like, hey, I was able to like not remove my that, emotion yeah, and, and every pull day. Or anything like that. And, and, it's and as learn. simple as that. It's as yeah. simple as that. Like maybe watching some videos every once in a while on YouTube. But really, the biggest thing is the money is staying put. Yep. That's it, dude. Like mm-hmm. that's it. I got up, I never like faltered and just pulled it or anything yeah. like that. It's like it stayed put. That's kind of where I'm at with crypto. Stocks, I played a little differently. Granted, I want it to stay put for the most part, you know? Yeah. But like, uh, I may pull on a rip, you know? Like, with yeah. crypto, if it rips, I was just telling him before you came in here, like, I was up real fair on that, like, big run up we had early, like, on this year up until, like, May 10th, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, like, now, like, I'm like right back, right, you know, a little bit below my like my buy ins, yeah, yeah. you know. But it's like, like yeah, dude, I could have like pulled for a five k gain, you know. But like, I feel like crypto's gonna come back, so I'm just cool. I'll I'll play that game with the stock game if I want to, mm-hmm. but I'm not really mm-hmm. gonna play it with the crypto yep. game. Yeah, that's just kind of where I stand. And like, keeping yourself from like emotionally reacting. Yeah, 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 basis. yeah. And then down the line, somebody's gonna be like. What a genius. It's yeah, like, it's like well, No, I didn't dude, do anything. Dude. I, I just, just stayed yeah. poor. <laughs> yeah. I lived my life yeah, and I yeah, put yeah. the money away. Yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't freak out about it. Just didn't it. freak yeah, out. Yeah. It like, does deserve some respect, though, because you didn't sure. ride the emotional roller coaster yeah. that people yeah. do have with their money. Yeah. Like, right, right. That, that's, it's a different breed. That's hard. Yeah. It is hard. It's hard. There's a big uh, There's a big emotional attachment to money. Oh, you know? yeah. And it's, it's, it's in you or it's instilled in you from someone else or many other people around you. It's It's tough. Yeah, and, it's tough, and, man. and like how you value it, man. It's like what well, most of us, most of us, I don't know, there's some rare, like are making way under $100 an hour if you take your salaries, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I mean, I, this is a funny thing and no disrespect to like sex workers out there by any means, but like you look up the rate of like a, like a sex worker, or like a hooker in Cleveland on Craigslist, like what's their rate? Then they'll like, they have, they have like respect for their craft to a certain number and then the same thing, like, with people that are working their jobs, they don't, like, you circle back, people don't value themselves the same as, like, as even that field, right? Yeah, no yeah. difference, each person has their own field, but at the end of the day, like, value yourself as a person and your ability to input and, like, sure. create things. And, like, you should you should always be on the up when it comes to finances. Like, yeah. you know, like, I like to have the idea that no matter where you put me in the world, like, I'll be able to make an income somehow. Yep. Yeah, you know yeah, saying? yeah. I think wrestling instilled that in me. I think Joe can speak on that behalf mm, as well. Sure. Like, dude, the worst can come to the worst. I'm just not gonna go and roll over on the street. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I over. Know, right? <laughs> Whoa! Like, it would have to be like an absolute choice of mine to yeah. absolutely just fucking like let it happen, you know? But yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. I don't know. I'm, I feel that real quick. I want to ask you. Um, could you give? What do you think? Ethereum will be at the end of 2021. Oh. And let's say we're I think we're like what 2300 right now. Let's say give or take 24. I think it's at end of 21. You think we get another push at the end of I towards think, the second half of this year? Dude, I think we break the max that it hit like around like 6. I think we're like we're around 8 to 9k like moving up. I think by like mid 2022, I think it's breaking 10. Mid 2022, you think? So yeah. let's say a year it breaks 10. Yeah, I think so. I think we can end 2021 at around 5k. I would agree. I think I we would, get one more big I push because I think we faltered at around 4.8, 48. Yeah. yeah. In May, and it ran like steep. 
Yeah. And then it just it, it did kind of cave. Well, well, granted, everything ran steep. All the cryptos yeah. ran steep. Well, they call it a winter, right? It goes through winters. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it seems like it, it is consolidating. All cryptos are kind of consolidating okay. right 100%. now. One hundred percent. And it's yeah. like, guy, like, hey, this happened before. What are you? What are you in trip out? Like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. ended up popping up. Like, put some more in. Damn yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's a good buying time. It's very. The How's waters the are steady yeah. right now. People yeah. forget the last time that it went and then yeah. came back. Yeah, yeah. people yeah. just yeah. like I, I don't know. It's like you got recency it. bias. It's like don't. It's like don't be overly optimistic. Don't be overly negative. Yeah, just yeah. Be yeah. somewhere in the middle yeah. and understand that it could go both ways. For sure. But For sure. Give it a shot. Put some money in there. It is and then, investing. Is investing, man. You can't right. lose your money. But uh, they do say the longer it is held for in a position, uh, the less percentage you are to lose over time. Yeah. So. Right. Right. And it's like hey, just. I mean, yeah, hold it. Yeah, H- just H-O-D-L. hold it. Yeah, hold it. Hoddle. Yeah, hoddle. Hoddle, hoddle it, man. Hoddle. Look at the crypto, man. It is. Yeah. I mean, hey, like, I lost on AMC early. Yeah. I, I was I like... I did. I moved that money from somewhere else. But that was... Oh, man. I held on to it, bro. I should have. I saw it. I saw it. My buying was rolling. like 14 bucks, and then... I had one. I Like, I had, like, a little more at, like, 17, 18. Mm-hmm. So... And I ended up... Um, I, I couldn't swallow my losses when it dropped down to eight. I was like, I'm just going to let it go up. You I, did it right. I, I think it'll go up to one point. Then it, uh, one day I just happened to check and it popped up to like 38. Yeah. And yeah. I sold it and then it went up to like, like 56, 60. 60. And I told my, my one buddy, he's like, I'm like, you still held? I was like, sell that. And he's like, no, I'm holding. It's coming it, down now. It's down, man. Like, but it's, but this, is, this is going to be a game. Like I said, it pays to be stupid right now. Yeah. I hate to say it. It pays yeah. to own some of the meme stocks. So, like, let's well, say Doge. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so it pays to be stupid. Yeah. Pay me. I want my money. Put my money. <laughs> Don't play uh, <laughs> For real, though, like, like I, I, I wouldn't play around with GameStop just because it's, like, too, it's, like, it's way so too high. high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, dude, high. like, if uh, AMC makes another, like, downgrade, like, a very solid mm-hmm. drop, like, it may be a fair thing to own some because I think it will run again. Some no, dials I mean, are very still, cheap. Still some places around. are still very, like, COVID heavy, too. So, like, for sure, for one, sure. once that's more, like, it's, it's <laughs> that's, that's the fundamentals. Bit, that's yeah, the fundamentals. Yeah. But, like, away from the fundamentals, it's just, like, like from the game. it's, like, kids that are, like, 12 and 15 in high school, like, learning how to, like, like put money in their account on fucking Robinhood and they're buying AMC right away, like, not knowing anything about it and they're making, yeah. you know, granny if they're... It's crazy because I was like swiping up on those Reddit pages thinking that I was going to find some golden nugget and like yeah, at the end of the day like for those who are it's it's weird because if you're in you're in you're yeah, getting those yeah, ups yeah, but if yeah. you're not in you're not in man you're like, not in you're just if, if somebody didn't tell you about it that's close to it be yeah. careful right yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and you'll see the trend is always pretty heavy like a large sell off it's almost like they have like a like a group chat of some sort. Yeah, yeah, they're all mutually agreeing. Sell, sell, sell. Yeah, it's a like, fucking Discord. Yeah, it's a, that's yeah. what it is. It's yeah. a Discord server. It's amazing yeah, now, yeah. but to each your own, man. Like I, I just I've realized that investing wise, my favorite investments are ones I could just put in, put a, put in, and like look at. Check it. Years, uh, yeah, years just down. Around and yeah. I, I would love to like benefit from day trading i don't know if that's it's too some, hard yeah. dude that will stress you out man that's man. it i don't It'll know stress if it's, you i'm out. not equipped for that it's not yeah. for me man it's like uh i i can do the math i feel good about the math like and i've tried like i've tried studying it a little bit but at the end of the day like if you're doing it for real it takes twenty five thousand dollars of equity yep you have to have that to have like that level of to transactions. make the transactions and then i know some dudes our age who Make a great income. I heard of a guy that you really though know, you you have to sit in front of your computer like for kind sure. Of all day. Yeah, yeah, and you can't Seriously, miss it. You can't, you can't miss it. You yeah, have to you be can't tired. Miss it. Like yeah. it's almost like it is their gig in a way, you know. Or yeah, that's maybe all in maybe on they that, do yeah. it like two days a week where they just day yeah. trade and they you know they can work the other days. But like, hey, this day and this day, I am day trading every week. You know, yeah. like Tuesday and Friday, I am day trading every week. So I don't know. You know, I've heard like, of dudes quitting jobs to go gamble at like at the horseshoe. It's true. Yeah, it's not, it's not not jobs. I was in college like with yeah. my one buddy and I had a class with a guy and he would. It's almost some like, people can make it happen, man. But yeah. like that's it's it feels like a diamond. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of emotion that's wrapped to money. And, like you gotta know, man. Like when enough is enough on certain days or like I don't know. It it takes. I think it takes many losses for those guys to be good too. Oh, for you know, sure. Like, yep. You gotta, you gotta take your for meetings sure. as well. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who teach it too. Like mm-hmm. one book, like Ray Dalio principles. 
Uh, yep. Huge book, but this guy created, he's the founder of portfolios. Yep. He created like all, he, he's like, he studied on a macro level economies and economics and his his specific industry was like i believe cattle and soybeans in texas yep. like he <laughs> would go to the ranches and look at like how well the books are how things are going and yep. then yeah. um his hedge fund i think i don't know it off the top of my head but in like an algorithm that they did like calculated every year in the u.s stock market since like 1903 including the great depression uh, his portfolios averaged between 17 and 18 and a half percent year over year during the great that's Re- really during good. the great depression 10 percent i believe returns so it's still crazy they say 10 percent you're like a star if you did that year after year right like and 17 18 is 17 18 percent yeah. and like yeah, to get done. to get that magic formula like you gotta have a lot of money and it's like basically like imagine being that guy that people are begging for you to take their money that's what that's what they are and it's all at this point ai they have it all set up like not ai but they have it set up by like formula where they're investing yeah 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 just magic formula for yeah. making money, yeah. dude. But it took him a lot of time. That's true. Case, it takes time. Exactly. There's a lot of diligence mm-hmm. that goes into it. Then self-made billionaire. So it's not like his dad gave him money. Yeah, yeah. 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 Here's yeah. a million dollars, and he turned it into a hundred million. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, self-made billionaire, dude. Uh, studying, studying. Uh, he started on the like stock market floor yeah. and was selling commodities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. Well, behold, they say your first hundred thousand is the hardest. Dude. Yeah. Your first hundred thousand is the absolute hardest. And after that, you can start. You start. You start, you start making some movies. You start making some movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, crazy concept, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, just worth worth learning about. Worth I don't know. Worth yeah. digging further, yeah. you yeah. know. For sure. You, uh, Drew, you got anything else for Nana? Uh, I, no, not really. This is a really good conversation, cool. though. Yeah. I, I'm really. No, I've like gotten reaction, really, yeah. really interested in the um, obviously the crypto and the stock field and whatnot. Um, aside from like my obviously my other interests in daily life and whatnot yeah so it's cool to share it you know with other people and whatnot and i don't know i think there's a lot of people who there's there's a lot of people who are scared to invest their money or at least try you know yeah do like just start with a hundred bucks like to mm-hmm. start with like 200 i don't know like or start just, with something you're safe something with you're going safe, to yeah, you're, the you're, jack and throw you know yeah and, like, yeah well, yeah, learn, learn about it. About yeah. it. Learn yeah. about it yeah. and, 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 and invest in something that you feel like comfortable with when you first start. Mm-hmm. And then as you start making some money, then you start making a little bit more risks on like, on some like developmental. Well, you know, Buffett like, always talks about like he would uh, he like would only go in the things he like really knew. Like yeah. like what are the things you're very interested in? Because then also it's gonna be easier for you to learn about them. Because yeah. it's like oh like if I if I love like I don't know like video games like. I'm only gonna invest in video game companies, you know, right. like because it's gonna be fun for me to see, like, oh, okay, like they, they're working on this, they're doing this. And the this, knowledge like, you already just, had previously exactly. had pay off mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, and absolutely. it's not like, yeah, like I'm gonna invest it in, and and culinary. It's like us doing DraftKings yeah, only with so UFC because yeah. we just know, mm-hmm. but you know, yeah. like, granted, like that would be our best route because we know we may know a little bit more about that. We may watch yep. that a little bit more. However, though, it still it still may not pay. Regardless, though, it's just an example. Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah, man. I I, I appreciate you guys, and yeah. I love the dialogue you got. Even when, like, even not behind like the mic, when we're talking, and yeah, like, yeah. what a great combo! And every yeah. time yeah, I come yeah. out with like a lot of energy, and I obviously see how hard workers you guys are, mm-hmm. like, and good representatives of like yourself and your community. So I'm a big fan of it, and honestly, like. Like, that's I'd like to see you guys just yeah. keep this rolling. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate you guys having having me on and like, okay. you know, it's, it's well, no, you're doing. Sure. Yeah. Even appreciate aside it. from anything, man, like you're you're a good conversation, dude. Like you're. Dude, I would, you I would venture to say you're a good conversation for anyone that uh, like if someone's not conversating with you, they're missing out. So I appreciate yeah. that, man. I, so you guys are the shit for real. For real, my guys, my guys.